John, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, as I, we told you, we, we talked before, uh, this is Kipi Summit, and we have a, a, a lot of, uh, we are really proud to bring international knowledge for our audience, for Brazilian people. So, John, uh, the first question that we have in mind, it's about user experience. That's becoming a very popular expression, although some people doesn't know about it. I would like you to, to, to teach us, to tell us about what and why user experience. Yeah, well, it, it is all about the experience. And the reason being is that, uh, you know, there's a big difference between customer service and customer experience. And it's kind of interesting. I'm known as America's and Australia's best customer experience coach, but I have a nickname and the nickname is I'm the anti-customer service guy. <laughs> and what, what I mean by that is I'm not a big fan of customer service. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to provide great service for your customers and clients. But when you just provide customer service, it just makes you average. You're doing the very little to get by to what your customers expect. But when you provide a customer experience is where you then begin to affect people's emotions and feelings. And that's what will differentiate you from everyone else. The, the definition of customer service is just to provide, just to be useful and helpful. Again, nothing wrong with that, but that's not going to differentiate you from anyone else. When you can affect people's emotions and feelings, that's where you create not only the, the stickiness to continue to do business with you, but the curiosity to find out what your business is all about so that new you can attract new customers as well. And it's become really the, the, the key uh, sort of philosophy today uh, about creating an experience. Yeah, yeah. We know that that's really uh, important and it's becoming one of the most important uh, strategy for most of the companies. And you know that you know, uh, we know that customer experience or user experiences are is related to people. All right. It, mm -hmm. uh, in the end, it's all about people. Uh, I'd like to know how to build a culture uh, and make the employees apply this customer centric mindset. You know, it's it's really hard to 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 make all the company uh, uh, do this think of the same way. All right. Yeah, it, it, there's, there's two ways of looking at it. Uh, the best way is to hire for culture. In other words, hire, for, hire people that believe in what you believe in. Now, sometimes it's difficult. I get a lot of times with my clients that I'm coaching and helping, particularly in the small business arena, they already have a culture and now they're trying to change it. They want me to make them create a Disney-like culture. Well, you can't just fire everybody and start all over. But the key is to make sure two things happen. One, you make sure people know what it is you want them to believe in. What is it that you stand for as a business or a company? And it's kind of like you hire people that, that believe that, that believe in you. I'll give you a good example. At Disney, um, before you even fill out an application to work for Disney, no matter what job you're applying for, you have to watch a video. And in the video, It explains what the Disney culture is all about. In, in Disney's mindset, it's all about making people happy. That's it. You know, whatever job you get, you apply for, you work at, your bottom line is you got to make people happy. And they tell you, if you don't want to make people happy, this isn't the right job for you. And, and in fact, they'll even go even further. They'll tell you that you're going to work when other people play, which means you're going to work on weekends and holidays and your birthday. And then they tell people that, um, the expectations are extremely high and uh, you may not even get Christmas day off because it's the busiest time of the year. And they go through all that to make sure that people realize that this is a serious job and I got to truly want to make people happy if I want to work for Disney. And guess what? After showing that and letting everybody know what that expectation is, about 15% of the people walk out and don't even fill out an application. And that's good. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be successful or they're not very good people. It means they don't believe in what you believe in. And when you want to build a culture, you have to find out what you stand for and then surround yourself with people. I'll give you another little funny example. Um, 
One of my favorite characters is Jimmy the Cricket, right? You can remember Disney, Jimmy the Cricket is one of my favorite characters. And people think Jimmy the Cricket is just a cute little cricket, uh, but he had an incredible phrase that Walt made sure he created. And the phrase goes like this. Um, when your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. Now, in reality, and I'm not very good at this, you sing it, right? When your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. And people think that's just a nice little song, but it has meaning. And the meaning is that when, you're, when, you, when your heart's in it, you do it because you want to, not because you have to. And that's what culture is all about. When I do workshops for, for businesses, I ask them, do you want me to just come in and do a, a training session, a shot in the arm, but I know six months later, nothing's going to change? Or do you want me to work with you and roll up my sleeves and create a culture that sticks? That's the difference. John, we know that Disney is one of the biggest reference of user experience, all right? Uh, what are the main steps that they use to enhance the client? The key is, again, you need to define what is it that you want to create in this experience. Uh, so um, it's kind of like a homework assignment. The homework assignment is what, what three things do you want your customers to say about you, right? What do you want them to say about you or what are they saying about you? So that's, that's where you want to start, right? Because you have to define what you want your experience to look like first before you can go ahead and create it. And Disney's already done that. They, they know it's going to be a magical place, uh, attention to detail, all those wonderful things. But, but first they had to define, Walt many, many years ago had to define what did he want Disneyland to be, right? The first park, right? That was 1955. He knew he didn't want to be a, a normal amusement park with just rides and food. He wanted it to be different. So he wanted people to say certain things about their Disney experience, right? So he defined it. Um, so let me give you an example. A lot of times people will tell me about their Disney experience and they'll say, um, uh, oh, they pay attention to detail. I can't believe that they pay so much attention to every little detail when you're, when you're around the parks or hotels. They might say things like, they made me and my children feel special when we were there, right? So who wouldn't want your customers to say those things about you? Right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to define the behaviors that must be done by you or your staff that demonstrated in order for your customers to say those things. Right? You can't, you can't just want your customers to say it. You got to do things to make them want to say it. So example, if people say Disney's attention to detail is so incredible, right? Well, what makes them say that is because you can't find a piece of paper anywhere <laughs> that are on the grounds, right? It's so clean. Why? Because during the normal season, there are over 75,000 employees, Disney employees that work at Walt Disney World. And every single person is responsible for picking up trash. So there, no matter if you're the CEO or you're the you know, bus boy at a restaurant, everybody walk around, you see a piece of trash, you pick it up. Now, if everybody does that, it demonstrates a reason for people to say it's so clean, right? Um, made me and my children feel special. If you've ever been to a Disney park or a hotel, let's just say you're out there and you're ready to take a picture of your family in front of the Magic Kingdom castle. Out of nowhere comes a Disney employee and will say, hey, would you like me to take the picture for you so you can be in the, in the picture? Sure. Wow. Right. Or if they see children, they'll get on their knees to be the same eye level of the children and maybe give them a little trinket or ask them how their day is or they look like a princess or or maybe they're wearing a sports team's hat. And they'll say, how's your team doing? It's interacting with them that demonstrates people to say they made me and my children feel special. So that's number two. The third thing is you need to have the right people to create the magic, because like you said earlier. Customers don't remember what they ate. They don't remember what they did, but they'll remember the people who served them. They'll remember the, the, the employees that, they, that make them feel special. So you have to get the right people. Make sure they're in the right role, right? If you want an outgoing person to be in front of um, your customers at, at check-in or something like that, they have to be the most bubbly people, right? You can't have a quiet, introverted person who's shy. 
So you place the right people in the right role. And the last one is it's your on stage performance. It's the entire customer experience that it is. Disney calls it showtime. Everything matters, right? You have to, from the sound, smells, sights, taste, everything is the performance that you put on when you open up your business. So it's answering the phone, it's returning emails, it's walking them into your store, it's what you look like, it's um, your attitude, it's are you organized? All of those things matter and that carries out those four things that create that customer experience. And is there any kind of methodology to make this experience getting better and better? Yes, yes, absolutely. And the methodology, believe it or not, is something Walt created a long time ago. Walt looked at, he wanted to make sure you created this customer experience journey from the before, during, and after. And Walt called it the plus factor. And he said, whatever you do, try to plus it by one. What could you do this much more? He didn't say this much more. He just said this much more. What little things can you do that provides just a little extra that will make your customers remember you, think about you, appreciate you, all those sort of things. So think about it. If everybody does this much, it adds up to be a lot. And those are the things that will remember. And again, take the journey before, during, and after, and every touch point, figure out what you can do this much to make it even better. I'll give you an example. One of my cl clients, was a uh, auto service repair shop and they offer coffee service in the waiting area, right? So they used to have a, a styrofoam cup like this that they served the coffee. It, it's terrible. So we went and plussed it by one and gave a nice little cup. So the coffee tastes better in this cup. It's the same coffee, right? But it just tastes better. They plussed it by one. Myself, for example, if when I get, um, when I'm doing some, inquiring or maybe a, a company is interested in bringing me in to speak at an event or do coaching, whatever it is. Right after I get on the phone, I send them a thank you card. Now, this is kind of a always make it magical. It's me and Goofy on there, right? And I put a little magic wand in my business card and a little handwritten note, right? Just to let them know, hey, I thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. So again, that's before the sale. During my presentation, I'm giving out magic wands, little Disney character figurines. I'm throwing them at the audience. We're making this a great fun event, right? That's my job. I got to give them a great experience. And then after, when it's all said and done, they had a great experience. It was a great event. I did my job. I'll go and send them a little Disney gift. If you dream it, you can do it, right? A little plaque so they can. Now, I touched them all throughout the process. Who are they going to think about? Who are they going to talk about? Me, hopefully, to other clients, other people. And that's what any business can do. It's don't just think of what you did during the sale. Think about before, during, and after, and every touch point. And that methodology that Walt created was, what can you do to plus it by one? And it can be simple. It means I'm going to come to work with this much more energy. I'm going to smile this much more. I'm going to dress this much better. I'm going to keep my, my business this much cleaner. I'm going to, there's all these little things you can do. They add up, don't they? Okay. So you, you have, you have to create touch points in the over delivery times. All right. So that you can over deliver the experience too. Uh, let's go to our students' questions. So the first one is from Barbara Laurindo, Juiz de Fora here, our city. Uh, what simple changes can medium-sized companies apply to improve their relationship with customer and boost their results? Ah, that's a great question. Now, I don't care what business we're in. You have to think about your business, that you're in the relationship business, right? It's all about building relationships. We all like to do business with people we like, right? We all want to work with people we like. So in order to do that, You need to build relationships. Here's the simplest way to build relationships is get to know their story. Spend some time getting to know the stories of your customers. Spend a little bit of time getting to know who they are, what they like, what they dislike, what their hobbies are, what 
their families, kids, those sort of things. Just uh, not to get too personal, but just to get to know a little bit about their story. The reason why is because you will demonstrate that you are interested, not just interesting. Most businesses think they're really interesting, right? We're the number one of this. We have the best product of that. We're, we have the best this. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares about that, right? We've been in business for 50 years. Nobody cares. What they care about is, are you interested in me, the client, the customer? So be interested, not interesting. And you become interested by getting to know their story. Spend a little time. The same thing is they want to know your story. So share your story. You know, again, not getting into the personal things. Tell them a little bit about you and your business or, or what your hobbies, what you like to do, your family, whatever it is. What that does is it, it creates a connection. And when you create a connection, that's the beginning of a relationship. And people won't hear you. People won't do business with you until they know you and they feel comfortable with you. And that builds trust and assurance. So make sure you are interested because when you're interested, you demonstrate to your customer that you're important. You even demonstrate to your staff. Be interested in your staff, getting to know their families and their kids if they play uh, football or whatever it might be or, or they did won some award in school. Be interested. That, be, they, that tells them that you care. Big, big, big factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really big tip. Barbara, take it, all right? That's really interesting. Uh, let's go. The second question, Beatriz Landman, Ponta Grossa, Paraná. How can you adapt concepts of the Disney way to improve customer customers' experience in the digital world? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't beat digital technology, right? It's, it's here to stay. Um, it's great. Digital technology is great. I always I tell my clients, you need to create a digital magical experience, right? Because in many cases, we're doing more on our phones, on apps, all kinds of things. And technology is good. Technology has made things more convenient. Technology has been able to help us communicate more effectively. Technology has even wowed us. We, we go, wow, I can't believe I can do this uh, using technology. But there's one thing that I think you should never forget. And Disney does this really well. And any business needs to make sure they... They, they don't cross that line, is that remember, it's still a human experience. It's still dealing with people. And people love the emotional connection. They love that person personal touch. So you got to figure out how you can still use technology, particularly in this digital world, to still create uh, a human touch experience that makes people feel important, right? I'll give you an example. Disney has these magic bands. And they, they so if you stay at a Disney Resort Hotel, they give you a magic band and you can charge to your room. You can get in your room. You just, you don't even need a key. You don't need a credit card. Um, your, your passes, your reservations, everything's on this, right? So again, digitally, incredibly convenient, right? Perfect. But what they did was they allow you to now go online and you can get your own personalized magic band with your name on it, your favorite character. So again, now that now the kids are walking around with these bands and are going, look at my band, my band's better than your band. <laughs> it's created this personalized experience. Plus, when you walk around with this band, you're like, I'm a Disney resort guest. I get to get in front of the line. I get to do all this stuff, right? It makes you feel important. So although the digital experience is great, convenient, don't ever lose sight. You still got to try to Add in that personal touch, that human factor. Very important. Great, John. The last question is for Aldrin Jr. Aracaju, Sergipe. How do you study your customer and discover the details that will be useful and make difference in their user experience? No, that, that's really interesting, an interesting question because in the, at the two questions before you told about it's really important to discover what is your customer interests and all these things related, all right? But now the question is how to discover it. <laughs> no, please tell us. Yeah. Uh, well, there's, there's, no, there's no magic secret, okay? There's no magic secret. The, the thing is you need to, you need to get customer feedback. Um, 
We need to kind of figure out what is it that they really want? What is it that they're looking for? We know they need our product. We know they need our service, right? If, I, if, I'm a, if I need to get my car fixed, I go to an auto service repair shop. If I need to buy flowers for my wife's birthday, I go to a florist. We know we need those services. But what is it that people want? That's the, really the difference. And when you figure out what they want, um, then you try to, again, make it better. So the best way to do this, and I know there's lots of different ways and surveys and and survey monkey and, and you know, uh, polling and all this good stuff. Those things are great. But here's something that I'm going to tell you is the best way. Just go ask your customers. Just go ask them. The people in the stores, the people in the restaurants, the people walking the sidewalks. Ask them what they really liked and what they maybe you could do better. When you personally ask someone, it shows and demonstrates that you care. And you'll get some really good feedback that way. Um, Walk around your business. Many business owners that, you know, they sit in the office and they worry, they worry about inventory and they worry about, you know, uh, data entry and all this stuff, loading the trucks, all those things are important, but you got to walk around. You need to inspect what you expect yeah. by being there. And then you can catch people doing it right, your employees. You can also find out what's working and what's what not working, where the lines are forming, what's where you can see customers are impatient on something. Then you kind of figure that out that, wait, I got to work on that. Right? We got to make that better. Also, go to your competition. Find out what they're doing and then do it better. <laughs> do it better. Just, just you know, I don't, don't steal what they're doing, but just do it better. Because you find out what they're doing and, you know, they're, they have customers too. And you go, gosh, that's okay, but I know we can do it better. Go and do it better and you'll start to get that, build that market where people, you'll become the top of mind awareness in your in business and industry and in your community. And people will just think of you and, and go to you all the time. Yeah, yeah. We have a common expression at industrial engineering. Uh, it's called go to Gamba. It's when you have to go where the workforce is are, are working and then you can see and feel what's really happened, where the problems happening and all these things, right? It's really interesting to talk to you, but I have a final question. Uh, and uh, I'm asking this for all the speakers trying to collect their point of view about it. In your opinion, where should be our effort to construct or to develop the market of the future now? Yeah, it, again, it goes right back to it's all about the customer experience. The customer experience is the next competitive battleground where businesses are going to be won or lost. In fact, people are making decisions not based on price or what a product can do. They're judging it based on the overall experience while I'm buying or using those products. So again, it goes right back to that experience. And people will spend more for a better customer experience. So now you no longer have to compete on price and try to lower your prices so that you can compete with, if you're a small business, you can compete with the big box stores or, or Amazon or, or the, big, the big stores. If you just provide a great experience, people are willing to pay more and tell others because just one good satisfied customer will lead to at least nine new referrals. And so a lot of businesses focus on customer acquisition, right? Every business has to find customers. I get it. We all need customers. But what about the customers you already have? What are you doing to create a great, unique, memorable experience that will differentiate your business from everyone else? What are you doing to take good care of them? If you do, they will spread all the word out, tell you how great you are, and tell everybody. Marketing is no longer about selling products and services. It's about the stories that get told. So what stories are people saying about your business, about your people? They're not saying any stories, then you're boring. You're just providing service. But if they start sharing positive, great stories about you and your business and your team, that's when you know your customer experience is at the level that you want it to be, and you can take it even further. Thank you very much, John Forbica, again. It's amazing, the content of our speak, really good. I'm sure that it's, it opened the mind of a lot of students, Brazilian students here, who will understand more about how important it is user experience to 
survive and to develop any kind of business. Thank you very much again. And feel free to show the people for our, our audience uh, where they can find you. Sure, sure. Uh, you can go to my website, which is just johnformica.com. So it's J-O-H-N-F-O-R-M-I-C-A.com. Um, and sign up for my Magic Minute newsletter. It's just an email newsletter. It goes out once a week. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. But it's just tips every day. Every week, I send out a little tip. I call it a Magic Minute. And it just takes 30 seconds or less to, to read or watch. But it'll give you little tips on what you can do to make, create a more Disney-like culture experience. There are tips on leadership. There are tips on hiring. There are tips on marketing. There's tips on all kinds of things. Share it with your staff. Share, you know, think, make you think about what you can do better in, in your business. And again, there's a couple of free videos that go with it. It's just my way of giving back to all of you. I encourage you to, to go on it. Um, I also have a, um, a top selling book. If you go to amazon.com, it's making the customer experience magical now. How to succeed in business and beat out your competition today. It's actually Disney's success model through my eyes. It's a really great, easy to read book, but it's not just a book you read and put on a shelf. After each chapter, there are action steps and activities and exercises that you can do in your business to create that Disney-like culture. Certainly willing to do that. And again, if I can help you, if you know any events that are coming up, you'd like me to do some training or speaking, I'd love to. Please feel free to share my services uh, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. It's been a, a just a, a great opportunity to be in front of all of you. And I thank you for your time, that's for sure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Great day.